Welcome back. This is now episode nine of the Iron Sharpens Iron series, and I have a really special guest today. I have second place at the 2020 Arnold Classic Physique, Terrence Ruffin with me. Terrence, thank you so much for uh, joining me here. I've been a big fan of yours forever, and I just really appreciate you taking the time and coming on here. You know, thanks for having me, man. Uh, yeah, definitely excited. I'm, I'm a big fan of what you guys do. You, um, I, I've met uh, Sarah. I know you're, you're a uh, colleague of hers, and uh, yeah, you guys are awesome. Yeah, well, no, I appreciate that, man. Sarah, uh, yeah, Sarah's a good friend of mine. We've, uh, we've gone back for a few years now and stuff. So uh, we actually started bringing on more coaches last year onto the team. I, I had started with Lane uh, about three years ago as just as an intern, um, and then I started my master's program, and, and Sarah and I had met just before that. And so uh, we went through our master's program together and then we were looking at building the team a little bit more. So I told them, look at her. And so we brought okay. her on and she's been great and we've just continued to build the team. So we That's appreciate awesome. the support, man. I appreciate that. So um, basically what this series is all about is I was kind of giving the rundown a little bit ago. Um, I just kind of want to give a voice back to the people in bodybuilding that I feel have a good message, do things the right way. Cause I think you'll probably agree. There's a lot of bullshit that gets spread around out there. <laughs> and, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm 35. I grew up in the magazine era. I've been loving bodybuilding since, you know, magazines were hot on the shelves. Um, but I've seen a big trend kind of occurring over the last few years, last decade of uh, just basically anybody that can get on Instagram and put any, any information out there. And I just want to kind of give a voice, not only back to the bodybuilders, but in a selfish reason, talk to y'all because I'm big fans of your guys's and respect you all so much. So, um, you have now competed what four times, three times in the Olympia, right? Yeah. Three. I'm, I set out the, uh, last year, but yeah, three times. Yeah. So you got three top tens in the Olympia. I know you kind of were bouncing back and forth between ninth and sixth, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, hey, but you know what? It, people would kill for top 10 at the Olympia. And, you know, let's talk about that a little bit, because when you started, you've, you've been competing, what, since you were about 18, 19 years old, somewhere around there? Yeah, the first show I did was um, when I was 19. Um, I started getting ready um, about a year before then, so 18, 18, 19, yeah. What got you into bodybuilding? I, I know I've heard from other interviews, like, your mom's been a really big support system for you and big fan, but, like, how did you get into bodybuilding? How, what drove you to doing that? Okay. Um, so, uh, backstory. So I joined the military at 17. Um, at the time I just didn't feel like going to college. Mm -hmm. Um, I, my mom was, <laughs> I was going back to my mom. She was very strict. So, uh, you know, I graduated uh, a year early, but at that point I was kind of burnt out from school. Yeah. So, uh, and then the, the, the fees and everything, I didn't want, she, she, you know, I had experienced some like uh, troubles with college loans and stuff. So she didn't want me to do that either. So uh, we figured the military would probably be a good option. So I joined the Air Force. Um, at the time I wanted to do something different. Still being 17, I played Call of Duty and all that stuff. So I was like, oh man, I'll just, uh, I'll just do special forces. It'll be easy. And uh, <laughs> Real quick. So I got to tell you, Terrence, when I was deployed in Iraq, like any sort of downtime that we had, like we'd walk into our MWR sec like center and everything, and all of the dudes in my in my unit were playing Call of Duty and all this stuff. I'm like, guys, <laughs> this is how you want to relax when we literally have this. Going I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds stressful as shit. Yeah. But I get I get where you're coming from. So sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so you know I you know so I, I joined and I, I try for this uh, career field called Tech P. Um, you may you may be aware. I'm not sure, but uh, it's a it's a division in the Air Force that uh, specializes in close air support um, for the Army, uh, JTACs and and Romads and stuff like that. So, uh, and I ended up not making it. Unfortunately, I had like a month left. But uh, you know, uh, it was it was a good experience. I'll say that. But um, in the meantime, while I was getting my my new job, uh, there was a gym across the street and this old condemned. Uh, dorm room so I started training and it rented you know when I first started it was to it was in the hopes of going back to 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 uh, complete that course but you know as, as time goes by I started gaining more size more muscle 
And um, I was like, oh, well, I kind of just like training. So, uh, <laughs> so I, you know, I went from like 125, 130 to 155 in the matter of like uh, about four, three, four months. And um, so I was like, you know, um, I, when I got my new job, I met up with this guy and he was in bodybuilding. And he said, maybe uh, you should try, you know, bodybuilding. And so, you know, I was, this is like the beginning of like the magazine, uh, you know, still magazines around. It's social media is there, but I wasn't big on like using YouTube and I don't think Instagram was around. If it was, I didn't know yeah, about it. Like 2010 or something, I think Instagram came around. It okay, was, so it was it was I, around. It was. I just, I was. That's how. Like, I I did not use social media much. I didn't have a smartphone either, so I, that's probably why. Yeah. Uh, this right. was, and this is kind of sad. It was 2012. <laughs> 2012. <laughs> but um. That's hard. Yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah, I um I went to the store and I um went to the magazines and I saw a photo of uh, Dexter Jackson, um on a cover of uh, Muscular Development and I saw uh. Joe, Joe Thomas, Joel Thomas, he's actually lives in Tampa, not Tampa, but uh, Florida. Okay. And um, after that, I was like, oh, yeah, I definitely want to do this. So um, that's kind of how I got into it. How yeah. many people do you think got their start because of seeing Blade on some cover of a magazine at some point in their childhood? You know, it's crazy, man. I can't imagine how many people uh, Dexter, like, how, like how many lives he's changed, you know, throughout his book. Because he's been around for a while and, like, like I said, he's the first bodybuilder I, I ever saw. So you have um, a good relationship with him. Have you I have him? a decent. I've I met him and I'm cool with his family. Uh, I got like a little bit of an in. My cousin, and I'm really close with. He um, went to college with his daughter. They both went to the Air Force Academy. Oh, okay. And um, so he went to, and he's best friends with the. He's best friends with the uh, her the, the daughter's husband, and he's pretty close with her too. So. Um, for the first time, I, I've met them a couple of times, but I actually got to have, um, you know, brunch and hang out with them, like, for a full day um, after the Arnold this year, so. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my, uh, actually, just going back to the military thing real quick, um, I actually had looked into joining the Air Force as well. Uh, my brother was in the Air, my stepbrother was in the Air Force at the time, and um, funny story, I actually, got the call from the army saying that they were going to, um, I could go in as a medic. I could go in as combat medic. That's what I went in as. Oh, okay. And I was like, shit, do I wait to hear back from the air force? Cause I really wanted to go into the air force. Um, cause I wanted the chance to possibly be stationed with my brother somewhere. That was and, cool, man. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, no, this is happening for a reason. This is what I want to do. I knew I wanted to go back to school and get my master's. I knew all this stuff. So I'm like, I, I'm going this route. No joke, two hours later, after I already had gone in and signed, Air Force called me up and said, you know, you're accepted, you're into this and that and that. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> but it, all, it all worked out for a reason. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you touched on something that um, actually I was going to ask you about later on, but I think it's a really good jumping point here. Um, you talked about when you first started lifting, you jumped from like 135 to 155 in a few months. Um, what was the key to that? Was that just training or did you start changing your diet around at that time? Did you start like figuring out, Hey, I need to be in a more of a calorie surplus or take me through. So, that. Yeah. 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 Um, and you know, it's funny, like a lot of people, um, they want to start off, you know, in the perfect way and the, you know, they don't want to start anything until like they have like the perfect coach, the perfect trainer, all this stuff. But no, I, you know, I, I trained, um, I didn't know much about training besides what I learned from football. So um, and then what I learned in the magazines, which was, you know, pretty basic stuff, you know, four sets of eight to 12 on every, every exercise basically in the magazine. And then, uh, food wise, I just ate more. I ate a lot more. I just ate until I couldn't eat anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely started eating more. Um, just, yeah. So I, um, I, I would, yeah, I yeah. started a, a series on my YouTube channel going through like a whole long and doing like a whole long off season, like build. And like okay. just documenting the good, the bad, the ugly, everything, because I, there's a lot of people that just think you can stay ripped and shredded all year round and put on some quality no. guys, and you can't. Not for guys. And I know you're a lot in my like my position. Like we're smaller guys, just naturally, um, and it's just not going to work. So for you to go from 135 to 155, that took a lot of commitment. 
Yeah. Um, and also, obviously, you had a lot of those newbie gains that were coming right away. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. what really I wanted to touch on was that you and, – and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to get the dates right. Was it in 2016 you were, like, in the mid-150s on stage, somewhere around there? Yeah, uh, that was my first Olympia. I was 157 or so, 157-ish, yeah. Right. And Olympia, yeah. You jumped up, and you were, like, 172, 174 on stage this year? at the yeah yeah and the reason I bring that up is because I was looking at I was looking at some comparison pictures I think I actually you posted them Uh, I was looking at (laughs) comparison pictures and uh it's a it's a huge night and day difference now that's a lot of that's a lot of weight in general but your look (laughs) looked like a lot more than 15 pounds or whatever it was in between and um I think that's really important for people to realize too because on your frame and how you go about you're posing and presenting your physique it goes a long way. I mean, you got second in the in classic physique at the Arnold this year with a pretty stacked uh, class, right? Yeah. yeah. Alex, Alex looked good. I, I was, I was back and forth between um, um, Alex and you like, okay. Making it. Um, I, I could see it both ways. I can honestly see it both ways, man. But you guys had a hell of a showing. Uh, Steve yeah. had a hell of a showing too. And how do you feel? Because obviously we know Brian wasn't there. We know uh, Chris wasn't there. Um, who else am I missing? Um, that's it. That's going to be at the Olympia, um, I think. Uh, George and Keon switched it to 12. So oh, I, I am missing 12. That's right. I knew, yeah. I knew, um, I knew uh, George did. I, I forgot Brian. Wait, Keon. Keon, Keon. That's right. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure who plays. I'm, I'm missing one guy. I can't. I don't know who it is. But yeah, one out of the top five. But yeah. So uh, how do you, how do you feel based on the showing that you and Alex and Steve had at, at Arnold this year? How do you feel you personally are going to match up when you throw Brian and Chris into the mix at Olympia? Because I know they are, you know, they've been one and two every year. Uh, but you have made tremendous strides this year. And then you also throw Alex in there, who's made tremendous strides. So you guys, uh, you guys think you're going to give them a push for a run for their money? <laughs> I definitely think it's possible, man. You know, it's crazy. Um, at first, I was, like, really, really excited. Um, but, you know, it's crazy to see how, like, how competitive, you know, how us uh, top competitors are, are very, very similar, like, um, you know, I got my little uh, storage room gym set up. Uh, you know, um, I saw Chris Bumstead bought he, – he decked out his uh, basement. And I see Breon's training somewhere too. So, you know, nothing's changed for us. <laughs> so has got um, an unfair advantage. He's got a brother-in-law <laughs> who's a top IFBB pro. <laughs> They're yeah, so, with them all the time too. But what, what does your gym setup look like right now? Because right now I'm – I got a 35-pound dumbbells, the heaviest I've got, and I've got some resistance bands. Yo, know, so I, um, I've been, I've been, uh, so what I did was I, you know, at first I thought I could make do, I bought like a bench. It was $225. The one with the, uh, leg extension and, uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. Like those, I bought one of those. Yeah. yeah. So I bought that. And then like, I just kind of got frustrated and I live on the second floor. So it just kind of, I just, it was not ideal. And it was like, it kind of, it really frustrated me that I had to hold back quite a bit with not, you know, like, I don't slam weights, but even like the, even if you just drop weights slightly, you know, my neighbor's going to hear it. So, you know, you know, so um, I decided to get a storage unit. I'm paying about 89 bucks a month for the storage unit. Hmm. It's a 10 by 30s. Yeah. So 300 square feet. And um, I found a um, equipment, gym equipment reseller. And um, I got, it's all the equipment I have is used except for my uh, lap pull down row combination, but um, I got a uh, Swift machine that double as a doubles as a uh, squat rack. Like the, it's a cool. I've never seen it before. It's a Swift machine, but like you know, like the the stoppers. Yeah. Um, on the stoppers, it has like a, a hook for the uh, for barbells. Like bearing thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen. It. I thought that was really cool. So that is cool. I, uh, so I have that. I have a um, like a lat pull down uh, uh, low row attachment, so I can do all my cable stuff mm. with the with the lat pull down. Um, a chest supported T bar row, um, a leg curl machine, 
and a um, V squat. But I want to get rid honestly, I want to get rid of that V squat and get a hack. I just I found a hat squat. I just don't have the space for it, so I'm trying to sell the V squat now. So yeah, to replace uh, it. So yeah. That's where I'm at. Like I really about three months ago, I really wanted to duck my garage out and just build a whole home gym and stuff. And mm -hmm. um, didn't pull the trigger on it. We had some other. We just bought a new home last year, and we had uh, some other things we had to do. Um, had to put like a whole house generator and all that stuff. And so that took that took a good chunk of chunk of change yeah. out. And now I'm like, eh, you know, I'll do it later on. And then this quarantine hit. And I'm like, shh. Yeah, done. So, but, um, no, it's, um, yeah, it's yeah. a really good setup, man. Um, I mean, that's that's plenty. I'm sure you're. I'm sure you're still getting great workouts. And have you have you felt any sort of a just in your own opinion, based on what you know you've done in the past, do you feel like you've dropped off at all, or have you been able to maintain pretty good intensity during this? Um, just a little bit when I was training in my in my house, it kind of dropped a little bit, but it was still pretty good. Um, you know, you just kind of have to change how your approach. You know, normally I'm pretty focused on progressing through load, but uh, I was kind of limited, you know, with my setup, so. Um, I kind of started moving more towards like increasing reps so um, with a with with a specific load so um I did that for a while but yeah it was I do feel like I'm slightly um weaker and my weight hasn't changed at all but my competition my uh composition changed a little bit okay. you know a little bit softer but still very very good I think um when's the but, plan to uh start prepping for the Olympia supposedly you know if it happens so um 12 to 16 the last two press have been about 12 weeks so okay. what is that um like Ju july or june june june, june? Yeah. june yeah yeah so you're working with john meadows um love that guy love that guy uh <laughs> how did you i i think i heard the story but like you you connected with him years ago but you guys didn't start working together right away right 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 so uh, how did that all come about? You guys just stayed in, in contact and you just reached back out to him? Yeah, yeah. So um, the first time I saw John was when I got my pro card in 2014. I had no clue who he was because I was still very new to bodybuilding, you know, at the time. Yeah, and in all uh, fairness, John Meadows wasn't the John Meadows we know today, like true. as far as popularity. So, yeah, because you know, he, really he still close. had a little bit, but not, not, not like, nah, yeah, not like today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I met him then and then he did a seminar. I can't remember. I want to say he did a seminar, um, in like about an hour and a half away from me in Panama city, uh, beach, Florida. And I went to that and, uh, he helped me train some arms, which was pretty awesome. Cause you know, um, cause yeah, I was a pro and all, but like I was 154 pound pro and there was no classic physique at the time. So like, I wasn't like, I was like, kind of like a nobody well, still. Yeah. <laughs> for his love you know because he still was training pretty good pros at that time you know you know up and coming pros uh, so you know um that's the first that's the first time i actually met and sat down and talked with him and uh you know figured out who he was as a person and stuff like that and i really i really liked him and um from that point on we i started going to his seminars whenever i was in town so toronto pro at that show he had a seminar I, you know I, I, I came to that one i've never been able to go to a full seminar because i'm always competing you know Right. But, uh, any, you know, anytime I can, you know, like I, the, the alternative is just me sitting in my, on my bed in my room so I can sit at a seminar and learn something, you know? So well, and uh, that's, what I, that's what I really respect about you, man. Cause there's a lot of pros that regardless if they're new pros or they're experienced, they don't take opportunities like that. And, you know, you opened yourself up to learn from someone who is very, very knowledgeable, someone <laughs> I respect a lot. Um, yeah. And it's helped you. So, like, what what are some things that maybe John changed with your training or your nutritional approach uh, when you guys started working together that you weren't doing before? Was there a big drastic change in things, or there was there were some changes? Yeah. So he doesn't do my training. Uh, Joe Bennett does um, is in charge of that. But there's him and they've met and they you know they respect each other. Slightly different approaches, but some some similar concepts in there. But um john uh nutrition wise he actually just changes stuff a lot less like when i come into a show a lot less like a lot less changes quite a bit oh. you know it's crazy a lot less changes which, change which is nice yeah yeah even 
people ask me, it's so funny. They say, what'd you do to your water? What'd you do to your sodium? I'm like, well, we don't change sodium, you know, water wise. He gave me like, a, you know, one and a half liters more, which or one, I think it was one, one or one and a half liters more. That's not a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, in the past, I would go from one and a half to three liters. I mean, one and a half gallons to three gallons. That was Jeez. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to finish my gallon. I'm like, wow. Holy yeah. God. I remember, I remember when I had, I remember I had to do that. Um, I had to drive like, like 14 hours from like Fort Walton Beach, Florida to Miami for nationals. I couldn't even drive because I had to pee every 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. I feel like <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. So, um. <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't, that's the biggest difference. Like he changes a lot less with my programming. Um, he's actually a little bit more open to the foods I eat. Like he does like um, a little bit more flexible dieting. Um, so he gives me a plan, but like he says, if I want turkey instead of chicken, that's fine. Right. You know, like stuff like that, um, which I really, I really appreciate. Um, less cardio, a lot less cardio. Forty-five minutes, four times a week was the most I did. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's just a a lot, um, a lot less being done. Yeah. Now I remember, I remember the interview uh, was maybe a month or so back uh, when you were on with Fuad, and you guys were kind of comparing because Fuad works with John too. And yeah. he's saying something about like, yeah, he's, he's the high fat guy. And you're like, no, I, I'm pretty well. Off. <laughs> yeah. I died. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, right. <laughs> that, was hilarious. that was hilarious. So um, what's a typical, I, I know, trust me, I know every prep's different. <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what do you usually have to get down to? Calorie. Um, so it's got like, you, yeah, you say every prep's different, but like, it's pretty, it's been pretty interesting. Like, I would say each prep has actually gotten easier for me um, for whatever reason. I don't know if it's because, you know, more muscle or, or just I'm getting older, but things honestly seem a lot easier. Uh, but like I said, um, these last two preps, even the prep before that was, was easier, but it was still with the uh, mat. But um, with John, yeah, I've been doing 45 minutes, four times a week. That was the most cardio I did. Yeah. Um, Food wise, we got down to 150 grams of carbs. Um, last prep, we actually, I want to, see, yeah, 150 grams of carbs. This uh, this prep, um, the only reason why we we did maybe a little bit less the night, the day of the show, just because I needed to make weight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it really has. I didn't feel like I was um, dieting until maybe two weeks out from the contest i'm still full of energy i didn't have issues with really anything yeah it's been really really nice so it's kind of it's kind of weird to have to, it's kind of a weird feeling because you know people always say oh you know in prep you're supposed to suffer you're supposed to feel like crap but honestly I, I feel fine like you know um during that prep i felt good enough i went to the fair kind of hung out i didn't eat anything yeah. but i hung out um i still had energy to go to the beach and do all types of stuff well, I think a lot of times um, the reason prep has to get so rough for a lot of people is because of what they're not doing in the off season. You know, you sounds like you, you still maintain pretty well in the off season. So it sets you up well going into the prep. You don't have to make a whole lot of drastic changes and a whole lot of drastic, um, you know, adding of cardio and all this stuff to get down because you, you stay within punching range of where you're at. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, I will say each and every prep and each and every year, um, I've been able to um, adhere to my diet a little bit better because that's the, I think that's the hardest people part for most people. Yeah. Like the the prep is is a little bit easier because there's a goal, but literally like the, that next week, that next month is like the hardest part for people. Like they just go crazy and it just kind of like you said, it it kind of sets them up for a harder prep that next uh, that next time around. Do you have a go-to post-show meal that you like? It's pretty boring. I honestly, like every every show I do now, I have a bowl of fruit. Uh, mm. I literally take it to the show with me. Because one, I like I like fruit. It's sweet. And then it, it's also, um, it's like water. So like, you know, I'm thirsty. So yeah, I usually do that. And then after that, I, I don't have, I, I eat something bad, like really bad. But yeah. um, I, it's nothing consistent. Like once I've, I've done burgers, I've done pizza. The Arnold, I did pizza. I literally um, went home and like had a pizza and that was it. So <laughs> yeah, like, I'm done cutting it off. Yeah. 
So, so, uh, so let's go back good. to the Arnold real quick because um, – First of all, I want to get into talking about posing. Obviously, that is something you are absolutely known for, um, and you are tremendous at it. But I want to get your thoughts on Sergio, because Sergio's speech was pretty – he was, you know, really giving you a lot of praise, and he's like, you know, I should give this to you and all this stuff like that. What did you think about that, and do you have a pretty good relationship with Sergio? You know, it is um... – I know Sergio. Yeah, we know each other for a long time. He started bodybuilding in Florida, actually. Yeah, um, in New York City. he had to move away from his dad to get down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, like, if they knew his story, a lot of people don't know how his relationship between him and his dad. I think they would cut him a lot a lot more slack if they did. He's but, um, a little bit vocal about it in some interviews I've seen. Like, he explained to people, like, listen, my dad did not want me to do this. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So you've had so a it's really tough. I, I couldn't imagine imagine that whatsoever, that the mix of emotions and stuff like that that would bring. Um, but no, I've known you know, I've known of him for a long time because we didn't I didn't know him when I when I started out, but you know, you would hear stories. Um I would hear stories about him, you know, from uh local guys. Um uh, my we my uh, my old sponsor, yeah, he competed at the same show I did, uh my first show. So um, all tons of stuff like that. But um, yeah, it was the crazy experience. You know, I will I'll give him a hunt, like tons of props for doing it because he didn't have to. You know, yeah. it tastes like a, a very humble and a, a big person to kind of like you know you know you're in the spotlight, you get this award, but at the same time you're you know you're humble enough to kind of you know say something about somebody else. Yeah. Um, I don't think a lot of people would do that. You know, so I agree with you. I think Sergio's really misunderstood. I have no relationship with him. I've never met him. I would like to get him on here and talk to. Okay. Um, but I think that he got a lot of bad rap for going into that saying, listen, no one's going to beat me. Like, this is the easiest 10 grand. <laughs> and, and I get it. Like, it, it as a, you know, it's cocky, but it's funny. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. Now, that was really cool what he did and mentioned you and everything. And rightfully so. Do you think that either two scenarios, either classic should do something like that too, where there's a prize for posing? Or do you think they should have an overall winner for posing and I know that might get a little difficult because it's hard to take one open bodybuilder's physique posing as opposed to a classic physique or you know one of the other divisions but what do you think they should do with that do you think that it should be rewarded more moving forward yeah I definitely think posing should be rewarded more so like the issue with combining combining it is one I think to make it fair if you were to do that you would have to also do like uh, the other award they gave out, the most muscular award, and I'm like, well, classic guys would never win that. <laughs> so um, that's a good point. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, um, maybe they could have two, uh, but yeah, I definitely think we should be rewarded more for posing. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Who are some of the? Because you're still fairly young, and you've only been how long you been bodybuilding? Ten, eight years. Um, eight, eight years so far. Yeah. So without, you know, really being intrigued with it as a kid, kind of getting into it at 17, 18 years old. And to be fair, the last eight years or so hasn't really seen a whole lot of great <laughs> posing, right? Yeah, yeah. So when you did start posing and you started getting into that, did you look back at old idols and, and try to mimic them? Or is this something that just really came very naturally for you? Um, both. I would say both. Um, well, Course, um, the first person that kind of opened my eyes to what posing could be was uh, Kai Green. I was getting ready for my first show, and um, I was working with my coach at the time, and he gave me a really basic like bodybuilding routine, you know. And I was like, eh, I don't know, you know. So I went online and I looked at some stuff, and I found Kai, and I was like, whoa, that's, this is, you can do this on stage. So I was like, all right, well, you know. So if my that routine somewhere online I can't find it, but if you can you can is find my second one. Is it the Michael? Is it the Michael Jackson one that he posed to Michael Jackson? Oh, oh, that um I can't. It might have been that routine, but I'm not sure what routine it was. I would. It was probably a routine he did. Probably the first one I saw him do. I well, obviously I watched a lot of them. You know, they're only a minute long, but um, it's probably a routine he did um, um that year, uh, 2013, but um. Yeah, so like if you watch my first routine, it it's a lot of what he did. But then um I've started to look more and more, look into posing more and more. 
And because um, I really enjoyed it. That was probably my favorite part when I did my first show. So um, that's when I got into more of the, uh, the history. And I'm, I, I like history. I like I follow a lot of history pages online. Um, if you guys... I don't know if you know Eric Hams. I follow him because of, like some of the stuff he's posted about um, the history of bodybuilding and stuff. Yeah, Eric's really good friends with Lane and stuff. I I haven't got to meet him yet, but um, right. I'm sure at some point I'll meet him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I'll, I'm I'm a big fan of that. So that's how I got it, and I think everyone should kind of know where bodybuilding comes from. It, it it would solve a lot of problems. I mean, that's in life, you know, knowing the history of you know stuff. It would solve a lot of problems in general, but. Um, yeah, I think my favorite, you know, I started to do that. And my favorite bodybuilder from, you know, you know, I guess old, older school bodybuilder would be Lita Brada. He's literally my favorite bodybuilder, uh, posing wise. Yeah. Yeah. So he's literally the, I would say he's number one. Um, Kai would be number two. And then, um, I got some other guys that kind of go back and forth. Like, I like Bob Paris, Muhammad Mockley, um, those would be the, the, my top two guys right there. Yeah. Um, after those. So now did I hear somewhere, like maybe it was an interview or something you, you might've posted online, but weren't you trying to do some sort of like music video posing? Thing? Yeah. 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 Um, I kind of did it actually. Um, it took me a long time to find the right person and it, I'm lucky I did wait it cause I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been as good, um, before now. Cause I, I wasn't like, um, I didn't have it. I wasn't, I guess, good enough to, to pull it off at the time. So um, I did it with the your, all hook. Your fifty percent is better than most people's hundred. So let's <laughs> let's be honest here. Yeah. So um, I finally got to, to realize that vision uh, with Paul Hook. We did uh, my Hall We did it for Halloween. Um, it was uh, yeah. So I, um, it took a while. It took us maybe two hours to get that, maybe minute and a half yeah. video. You know, because um, I, I had to, I had to do, redo the routine like maybe 10, 20 times. Um, yeah, I had to do, I had to get like we had to do certain shots several times because um, I had props, so I had to uh, do the do the routine like a couple times without the props, then also a couple times with the props because I couldn't spin it like I wanted to uh, do the routine properly with it. So it was pretty cool. We had another guy there to hold the lights. Um, it was it was just three of us. Uh, yeah, it was really cool. Nice. Now, is that somewhere online? Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on. Um, it's called. It's from the movie Us. Um, uh, yeah, you can probably look up Ruffin Terrence Ruffin Us posing or right. Rough Diesel Us. It's on. It's on my. Uh, what do you call the thing? The bottom. IGT IGTV um, section. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of my routines because you can do like. Um, you call them like sections or whatever. So yeah. I have a posing so section. Things and stuff. So yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. IGTV, IGTV, not the highlights, but IGTV. Oh, IGTV. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have so to go I, check that out. I didn't realize that was posted. I, I heard about it. And I'm like, this. I do. Yeah, I love better. it, man. I want to do another one. I want to do more of those. Um, I just have to find good songs, and then I have to figure out props and stuff like that. Yeah. I like that Halloween theme, though. That's I'm sure that's going to be pretty cool to watch. So. <laughs> Dude, it's awesome, man. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, have you been reached out to yet, or have you heard anything about Athleticon this year? And are you in the running for getting an invite? <laughs> you know, I guess I'll go ahead and, and say it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got an invite. Um, I don't know who else is. They, I'm, I'm not supposed to say it, but they were supposed to announce it literally like five weeks ago. But um, yeah, I got to invite. Um, I don't know who else is doing it though. I have no clue. Yeah, man, that's huge. Yeah, that's awesome. thank you, thank you. So um, I'm. I have very little idea what's going on with the show, but um, I'm still very. I'm mean, very excited. I don't even know what's going to happen. To be honest with you, um, yeah, I I really hope it does. Um, I mean, I'm planning on driving up there for it. Obviously, it's going to be in Atlanta, so that's going to be nice. But yeah. Um, do you think, and this is actually just a question that just popped in my head, it wasn't even one I was going to ask, but how do you think Athleticon is either going to help the Olympia, or do you think that it's going to start taking away from the Olympia? Um, like, in, in, in what sense, in what way? Exactly? Well, 
I guess losing the the luster and the war of Olympia. Ah, uh, hey, you know what? Certain competitors, because of this purse that they're that athletic. Did you hear that thunder? Um, <laughs> the, this uh, you know, winning the purse that is supposed to be up for the winners, maybe more so for open bodybuilders and stuff too. I'm not really sure how they're divvying it all up, but do you think more people are like might in the future be like, listen, I'm going to hold off on the Olympia. I'm going to go for athletic. Time. So, um, not at, the, it, it could potentially be that way one day, but as of right now, no. Um, if you've noticed a lot of the open guys aren't even interested because, uh, the prize money isn't close to the Olympia, uh, as prize money. Um, Brandon Curry had said he's probably not going to do it. Dex is not interested. Uh, Phil Heath is a uh, promoter of it, so he's not comp- competing. Uh, or he's a affiliate with it, so he's not competing. Yeah. Um, so a lot of those big names are already out. Um, it's definitely a good thing for Classic because the prize money is even throughout. So, yes, it's less for them, but it's like – almost 10 times the amount we get. So nice. 10 I'm like, oh, that's a lot more. So, yeah. um, but the cool, the, the interesting thing is too, is uh, it is de- it's technically more exclusive because they're only allowing 12 athletes and it's, um, it's invite. It's invite. No other classic show. Well, no other show is only allowing 12 people. So only 12 people compete. Don't isn't it something? And maybe you know a little bit more, but it's you have to finish like top three at the Arnold. You have to have won a pro show, and you have to be either a former Mister Olympia or a top three Mister Olympia, something like that. Do you know? So there's there's several different ways you can. Uh, yeah, there's several different qualifications that would several different ways you can qualify. But even if you qualify, that technically doesn't mean you're going to be invited. Because, right. you know, there's probably 100 people who qualify, but they only have 12 spots. Yeah. So, um, obviously, most likely Mr. Olympias are going to be invited, um, especially since we don't have a ton. So, uh, Brian, Chris are, are, are probably invited. Uh, I'm guessing um, – I'm not sure. I'm guessing Brian, Chris, maybe Arash, Steve Lars, and then uh, – Alex, and then uh, that's a, that's several spots right there. Yeah. So I, I, if I, I did the math earlier, I want to say there were like six or seven spots taken by like top top guys, and then the other five or six would be left to maybe um, uh, the guys who just won pro shows, and then but no clue how they would choose yeah. those people. Probably the most popular, the most interesting. You know, they probably look at their social media pages and, and see how that goes, yeah. All right. It's going to be really interesting, man. I'm, I'm excited for it. I, I personally think that it's only going to enhance the, the exposure for bodybuilding, which is what I hope for. Um, oh, definitely, man. I'm excited. Like, I'm trying to um, – yeah, I'm definitely going to be putting on some cool routines there uh, for that show. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know yeah. what? Being so, like, entertainment-based, they might let you do some of your – you know, some of the no, no. theatrical stuff you want to do. That's what I, I reached out to the promoter, Robin Chang, about. He hasn't gotten back with me yet, but um, I 100% want to to take that opportunity if they allow me to to put on, like, a very, um, like you said, a, a more of a production yeah. um, for one of my routines. Like, I don't know how far they let me go, but I definitely would like some, like, <laughs> choreographed lighting, some, like, um, some background people. Um, a lot of cool stuff, dude, I would love to do. Some smoke, some thunder and lightning. Yeah, yeah, man. I think that would be amazing. Uh, we'll just have to see if they um, they would want to do something like that. Well, I am hoping it, it happens because I'm going to be there. And I <laughs> hope to see you up there on stage and cheering you on and everything. And um, speaking of stage, okay, this is kind of a two-part question. Um, number one, who is the maybe the person – not so much that like you have a bad rivalry with or anything like that. I don't want to get into that, but who do you really, really enjoy competing against the most? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, do, you, do you have like one of those like friendly competitive rivals? One of the guys <laughs> up there that you're like, every show it's either you or me. Like we're always back and forth. I like Steve, man. I like Steve Lawrence. Yeah. Um, he's always a good guy to be around. Um, 
I'm trying to think of anyone else that because uh because um yeah i'd probably say steve was probably my uh, one of my favorite guys to compete with uh besides that maybe brian because we we did our first practice show together so i've been he's we've been competing together probably i guess technically the longest oh wow you know? yeah we did our first he you know he was in 212 first but we did our first classic show at the uh prestige crystal cup um, i took third he took first at that show yeah so yeah both of those guys are danny danny hess is always interesting yeah. I always he's definitely a character he's like you know he's like the youngest guy even though he's the oldest he has like the youngest guy for sure he's definitely for life <laughs> his say that house is really cool yeah man he always comes to the show wearing like sunglasses and then um you know he pumps up for at least he does a full work a full body workout he and he starts pumping up at least like an hour before we hop on stage it's just interesting to see him uh do his thing <laughs> you know so now nah, everyone yeah but i like everyone's pretty cool which is you know awesome no one um no one has any you know uh there's no like it's yeah everyone's really cool with each other and it's pretty interesting to hear um Alex talk about it because you know he's been in 212 he's competing in 212 and he's he was on a he won shows in 212 so he's at a decent really high level you know right. um in in the 212 and then switching to classic and just hearing how he he uh, feels like it differs he says it's a, a lot more calm a lot more um um brotherly I guess he would say yeah, uh where more he like said two, cohesiveness and stuff yeah he said 212 was a lot more competitive like a lot of the guys were really quiet didn't do much um but yeah 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 so yeah speaking of 212 um you know there's been rumblings a little bit that Breon might might move back or might go up there do you think what do you think have you heard anything do you think he's going to stick around in, in classic or you think he might go up I don't know I mean it's hard, you know, honestly, it's hard to say. Like, I would probably have more of an opinion, but after seeing George and how he's – how much muscle he put on that quickly moving up to uh, the 212. Yeah. Um, it, like, it, George is definitely uh, a monster. Like, I didn't imagine – he put on, like, 20 pounds in eight months. I'm like, that's ridiculous. He's going to be a force up there, man. He yeah. So, Brian, like um, – I haven't heard the, the the rumors of him going to 212. I heard that he may retire, but I think he'll still come. I, think, I heard that rumor, but uh, no, I think I think he's gonna at least stay um, a little while. That's a tough question. I have no idea. I could, I'm just gonna say that I have no idea. Well, and what about you? I mean, do you do you see classic as being your home? Like, is that your wheelhouse right there? I mean, for me um, personally, I just selfishly don't want to see you come out of classic because I think you got that like really great classic physique that it's very hard to find nowadays. And I think you're built for that, but what are your goals? Like what are, what's your passion? Um, you know, when I was younger, I thought like I was more open to the idea of going to 212. Mm -hmm. I know I'm still young and all, but younger than I am now, I was more uh, open to the idea of 212, you know, and I'm still in, the way I used to think about it was, well, you know, from a physique standpoint, as long as I'm happy with my physique and I still have a small waist and stuff like that, I don't really care how much I weigh. Yeah. But, you know, and I still, like, overall, I still agree with that 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 mindset. But there, now that I'm older, I'm thinking about other things, like um, health-wise, like, you know, just being heavier like, at my height and my frame is not the best thing. And then right. uh, thinking about other things, yeah. So longevity game yeah 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 so there's that and then i like to I, I'm looking at danny hester he looks you know he's been around the same way forever and like he seems to be doing just fine you know um he's tons of energy doesn't seem like he has many issues uh always in shape now just because you know of, you know the, but um on top of that man i just think like business wise it's, it's a lot easier for me like um i'm and i so like I think that where I am now is very like I said I only felt like I was in prep maybe uh, for two weeks and I like that feeling because I'm able to get more done I'm more productive yeah. uh, with my business and different things like that and um, just looking at just looking at uh, from classic is still growing 
And I have no clue what's going to happen. I'm, I'm pretty confident that class is going to be growing for a long time. I As for the 212, I'm a little less confident, especially since they took them out of the Arnold Classic. Um, so there's things like that to think about. And then, um, yeah, so there's a lot of other things, not, not just because of how I would look, but more so just the other things around it. Well, you, you, I think what a lot of people think is that like you have to move up in a class in order to change your physique and you can do a lot of stuff with changing your physique while staying down there. I mean, as you grow and you mature, I mean, I know you're laughing saying, you're kind of joking around saying, you know, I'm not as young as I used to be, but you're 26. You know, <laughs> I'm 35, man. Trust me. The next nine years are going to be a huge, huge difference, but you can go about still changing your physique in classic and, and still staying around in that area. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of things that you can do. Um, yeah, you know, anybody can do, I'm not just saying you in general, but just anybody can do. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You can see some interviews of me back earlier saying like George and Brianna will make any progress. This is like three years ago, yeah. but they've made tons of progress and still being, you know what I'm saying? Especially George like that, this last year at the, at the Olympia man, like his conditioning was out of his world. And then, and Brian as well, Brian made a lot of improvements. Uh, He's even posted a couple of them from his first to, um, so like, um, no, nah, I definitely think people can improve, um, even if they're at their, they're close to their cap or at the cap. Like you said, there's still ways to make improvements. Um, uh, I didn't believe it at the time, but after seeing it done, yeah, yeah, it's definitely possible. Yeah. I remember I met, I met Brian at the 2017 NPC nationals right after he won the first classic and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I just seeing the changes from his physique until now, I mean, there, you, there's noticeable differences and yeah. improvements and stuff. So no, man, I think, I think you've got the right mindset staying there. I mean, you're thinking more long-term, not only health wise, but from a business standpoint too. And yeah, it's uh, something that, you know, 10 years ago, I, I know, I don't know if you and Fu had actually had the conversation, but I think I've heard him say a lot, like that's one thing that he wishes he could go back and do and, and have that mindset, uh, that business mindset more at a younger age and at the start of his career and it sounds like you've got that so um when you're up there on stage though like in the heat of the battle what's your mindset like like are you <laughs> are you dialed in and just focused on what you're doing or are you taking it all in like take me through the mindset of being not only an arnold classic physique second place but an olympia okay um so with this one, I'll tell you what was probably going through my head. Uh, one was definitely showing confidence on stage and seeing, you know, I've, 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 you know, people always talk about that, like the person who wants it more. You know, there's certain things that like aren't quite measurable um, where, you know, body is measured by, you know, size, shape, whatever, but also your presence is a thing that, that matters too. So always making sure I'm showing that, um, making sure that I, um, I'm just just doing more than the person beside me. Um, whether it's like, okay, this guy, it's, <laughs> I don't. I'm giving Alex some shit, but Alex got fucking. He got tired. He got tired near the end, like when we were when we were um, doing the pose down. Yeah. And he just kind of was walking away. I said, Yo, nah, I'm just gonna keep going. You know, I'm good. I'm good. So stuff There's like that goes through my head. Games you play in up there. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. Um, things that that also. Um, play an importance is this guy stepping over the line uh, you know is he move, inching forward small stuff like that um, and just little cues that you know that I've I've worked on with my posing okay like how does this feel am I doing this like um, we practice and stuff like that yeah um, one last thing if you could leave are you still there, there. yeah 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 I had a, a, a client yeah no 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 worries um, last question I want to ask you, and I'll let you go. I want to respect your time and everything. Um, if you could sit down with some up and coming bodybuilder, young kid right now, that's wanting to do this as a career, whether it be classic physique, open, whatever it is they want to do, what is the one piece of advice that you would give them from either, it could be training, it could be nutrition, it could be from a mentality standpoint, what's the biggest thing that you would want to leave an impression on somebody for with? Oh God! So this is a new, a new, just a person new to bodybuilding in general. Some eighteen-year-old kid like yourself, like yourself, seventeen, eighteen-year-old kid that's like, I want to be like Terrence Ruffin. What would you tell them that they should oh. do? 
Okay. Um, I would say the biggest thing is a lot of times people have goals. You know, they say they want this, they say they want that. But at the end of the day, one, they're not making the choices that reflect what they want and they're not, uh, they're not, the actions don't match either. So the biggest thing is making sure your actions and your daily lifestyle matches the goal you want. Um, I was, when I was 18, um, you know, I, I, all my money went to our bodybuilding and um, I didn't have the, I didn't have a smartphone. I didn't have like the coolest shoes. I didn't have the nicest stuff, you know, uh, all that went towards my goal at the time. And you'll, you'll see a lot of times with successful people that they sacrifice certain things in the beginning to get to where they want it. Right. Um, whether it's, whether it's, um, well, bodybuilding is a little bit different. You can't sacrifice sleep, but you know, <laughs> but in other stuff. So yeah. So, you know, certain things and certain luxuries, uh, I will say like, there is an important thing when it comes to, you know, people talk about balance and this and that, but you know, in the beginning, I don't think that's something, uh, you can, you can really do, um, having balance in the beginning or trying in the early phases of getting to where you want balance is something having something you can kind of think about once you you reach that point your goal or whatever but um there's always there's always you know even now I'm learning I'm watching guys like this is going for even further but even now I'm watching uh, interviews from guys like Kevin Hart and The Rock and these guys have reached that point where you think you can kind of chill out and relax but as you can see The Rock is killing it man he's still like he's doing this athletic con he doesn't have to he's got the tequila company he made yeah you know so yeah. i mean like it's almost exactly. working harder but i mean it sounds like you know from what you're you're saying is that uh first of all i agree i about the balance thing um i tell people all the time like listen if you want to be great at something you're going to be unbalanced at times yeah. yeah you're going to sacrifice family time you're going to sacrifice this or that for that goal but then there's other times where that goal can kind of hang out a little bit and you refocus on something else um, so yeah. I, I think that's great that you mentioned that's really important to kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say lose sight of balance, but just understand that it's okay to be unbalanced at times, as long as you mm -hmm. can build yourself back in when okay. it needs to be. And I think the other thing that I picked up from you is sacrifice. And I, that's a great way to put it. You, too many people nowadays, and I, I can't really blame them because generations before you were supposed to make things easier for you for the next, right? Yeah. But people are not willing to sacrifice. They're not even willing to sacrifice a few months to give a training program or a meal plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, let alone, you know, actually all your money going towards supporting your goal. So I think that's a great message, Terrence. And I, I hope if anybody's watching this that is in that same position that's new to bodybuilding, maybe you're not even 18 years old. Maybe you're 30. Maybe you're 35, whatever it is. Um, it goes for any goal. You have to know that you're going to have to sacrifice and yeah. that's okay. That's okay. So man, I want to thank you so much for, uh, chiming in here. I can't wait for all this Corona stuff to lift and, uh, you know, you being here in town, maybe we can meet up for a workout sometime. Yeah. Yeah, man. That sounds good. Thank you for all the support. Um, I know you said you follow us and, and, you know, really support our stuff. So, uh, I appreciate that, man. Is there any final words you want to say where people can, find you or anything you want to plug um yeah you, everyone can find me uh all my stuff is rough diesel rough diesel on instagram youtube my website uh yeah 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 if you guys want to reach out to me one of those ways would be the, uh, the best way to do it nice and i'm going to leave everything in the description box below so you guys can check that out too um it was really nice meeting you man i appreciate this i hope to uh be able to do some more stuff with you here in the future but you stay safe Stay healthy. Keep killing it in that ten by thirty uh, <laughs> storage unit you have. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, I really, I really can't wait to see you on the Olympia stage this year. Awesome, man. Thank you. All right, take care.